everybody, this is Praxis, and I realized yesterday I didn't tell you why Josh isn't going to be with us for the foreseeable future. And the reason is because his car died. I guess it has some major issue. It's going to cost $1,000 to get it fixed, and he didn't save up that kind of money. He doesn't have it kicking around. I've been paying him, but he's been using the money for other things, uh, and uh, now he can't get to work. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to turn everything into a prepping lesson, though I do host a prepping channel on YouTube, so you know, you know I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's always good to have, you know, cash set aside for surprises. Not that this was a surprise, the writing was on the wall with his car for a while. Not at all a surprise. But, you know, even things that are surprises, it's good to have, you know, kind of a rainy day fund for those types of things. And, and I know it's hard to save up money. I, I know, you know, there's so many things that are beckoning for it. But the reality for Josh right now is that he can't commute to work. He can't be here. So I'm not paying him. And uh, he's he's losing so much money based on the fact that he didn't have the money available to uh, to take care of the car. So at this point, it kind of becomes a catch-22 for Josh, but, uh, you know, if he had been able to just quickly get the repair done, you know, he, he would have very quickly been able to earn that money back, being able to come here. So, you know, again, it's like Josh, is, he's not a dumb guy. He's, he's a smart kid, and he... Uh, you know, I, I'm not trying to throw him under the bus or, or, or poke fun of him, but it, it is a good illustration of, you know, the need for having that emergency fund to, uh, you know, allow you to kind of keep going forward because if he had had it, he could have very easily made up that money, you know, working with me. So it's like, you know, it would have been almost like free money for him. If he had just set it aside, then he would have been able to very easily remake it. But, you know, he's got himself in a situation now where he can't. Uh, what I wanted to talk about in this video in terms of the house, though, because uh, I'm kind of taking over a lot of the stuff that Josh was doing at this point, uh, is I wanted to talk about putty work, because uh, we haven't really talked much about putty work. Uh, we, uh, Josh has been doing a lot of it. Now I've been picking up, and uh, it's actually kind of a good time to... Uh, you know, for me to jump in anyway, I think for Josh, because uh, he'd kind of hit a wall where he kind of wasn't seeing some things that needed to be done, uh, and you know, without me like standing right next to him and say like, putty here, putty here, putty here. Um, it's kind of a good time for me to kind of come in and do that last 10%. He, he did about 90% of all of it, and you know, now it's time for me to hop in. Uh, but before I do that, this camera I'm recording on, it can only run for five minutes. I'm afraid that I'm gonna run out of time uh, if I just jump right in. So I'm gonna do a quick cut right here. And now we're back with a new take. So uh, this is the putty that I'm using. This is called Durham's Rock Hard. You know, and, <laughs> you know, between the the picture and you know, Rock Hard, he's got his legs all split out. It's like who in marketing came up with that image? I don't know. But the stuff works pretty well. It's a water-based putty, uh, and it's really cheap. I like you can get this whole tub here, and this is enough to do. You know, definitely the entire house. The whole thing was seven bucks, and you can make so much out of it. Uh, just a powder, and I got this little tray that I've been using here. And this is actually something, a scoop that Josh found, just a little piece of scrap wood. So I'm going to take two little scoops of it, and you want to mix it up in small batches because it starts kind of curing or setting up after a while. So you don't want to mix too much and have it get ahead of you. It's kind of like cement in that regard. Uh, I'm going to put the, the lid back on here because you want to keep moisture out of the container. And... Uh, we've got this and our tool, the putty knife, and I found the best way to, uh, actually this is between Josh and I, uh, the best way to get the water in here is actually use the spray bottle because you can add just a little bit at a time because if you add too much water then you got to put more of the, uh, the, the powder in and everything. So this, this allows you to really control how much you get. I have the spray bottle here for pre-moistening uh, pre areas that uh, we're going to put it, the putty into so that it, you can kind of push it in, the water tension kind of pulls it in. So I usually like to pre-moisten the wood. That's another sexual innuendo right there. All right. And the consistency you're looking for uh, on this is kind of like toothpaste. I want it to be about like toothpaste. All right, we're getting there. Let's see. Yeah, something like that's kind of good. Like that, okay? We're going to take just a little, I usually like to kind of pop it on the corner, and we're going to go right into this section here. There's a, a nail that was nailed in at an angle. We're going to fill that, that guy in. I, I may put a face board on these later, but I'm not 100% certain. So I'm going to fill this guy in right there. And one thing you want to do as you're doing this is, uh, okay, once we get it all in there, 
You want to give it a good scrape at the end. That was something that actually Josh uh, tended not to do. He didn't like really clean it up with the blade, so it left a lot of extra stuff on here, which made a lot of extra work for him to do sanding. And this stuff is hard to sand through. So uh, you, once you get this stuff in there, you really want to just clean off as much as you possibly can and leave it pretty much clean looking as you do it. And if you do it that way, then uh, yeah, he, he kind of got the rest of this. Some of it, some of this mix though, he, uh, I think he put it on after it already cured and it, it's flaking and dry. So I'll get a little up here. But uh, yeah, Josh did most of this, but I'm just kind of going in and kind of getting anywhere that he missed. Uh, after this stuff goes on, I'm going to wait, uh, you know, I'm not sure if it's a couple hours or whatever, but uh, I usually just wait till the next day and then I come back and I give it a nice sanding. But again, if you can get it as close to perfect just with a knife, it makes your life a lot easier later when you're sanding because you don't have to sand off as much. So. That's it. I'm going to go through the rest of this because, you know, mixed it up and want to use it right away before it sets up. Uh, other than that, I'm j I've pretty much finished up all the stud walls. There's, really, all the stud walls are done, uh, and I've just been starting to do staining on these uh, floor joists up on the top and sanding them and then getting them stained. Because, uh, uh, yeah, Josh is doing the sanding, but he didn't really put his back into it, and there's a lot, you can kind of see a lot of white spots up there that could be a lot smaller. So, that's it. Thanks for watching.